Please, everyone, turn off your mics. Good morning, everyone. I would like to open hearing number 18 of the 183rd period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights that is entitled Institution of Judicial Independence in Argentina. It was requested by the Argentine Association of Prosecutors and the Association of Prosecutors and Officials of the Public Prosecutor's Office of the Province of Santa Fe. My name is Julissa Mantilla Falcón. I'm president and country reporter for Argentina of the Inter-American Commission. Today with me are Commissioner Esmeralda Resemina de Troitinia, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, and Commissioner Roberta Clark. Also today with us are the Assistant Executive Secretary uh, of the Commission, Maria Claudia Pulido. I would like to greet the delegations, the, the representatives of the state and civil society organizations who requested the hearing. Before beginning, I have some uh, instructions regarding the distribution of time. We will start with civil society for 20 minutes, then the state for 20 minutes, and then the Inter-American Commission for 20 minutes. We will have a second round of interventions with the civil society, we have 12 minutes, and the state will have another 12 minutes. I also would like to say that we have a digital tool to measure time, we have a timer, and we have a simultaneous interpretation and closed captioning. And I would like to say that the hearings are streamed and that the recordings of the hearings are available at the, on the YouTube channel of the Inter-American Commission. Having said this, I would like to give the floor to civil society organizations for 20 minutes. You're on mute, please, Mr. Omar. Perfect. Can you hear me now? Honorable members of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, dear representatives of the state of Argentina, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank the Honorable Commission for allowing us to participate in this thematic hearing and to present on an issue that is so important for human rights. I would like to thank the School of Law of the University of Buenos Aires for giving us this room. Uh, all associations are, are here. My name is Marcelo Omar Barona. I'm on behalf of the Argentine Association of Prosecutors, and I'm here with the uh, Gisela Paulicelli from the Office of Public Prosecutor of Santa Fe. Also, I'm here with the Vice President of the Association of prosecutors of Argentina. And here we have also with Ms. Goyeneche and some colleagues to present. We are here to comply with an essential duty that is regarding with the right of every person to access to impartial justice. And for that, the state should guarantee the right uh, proceedings for appointment and to making uh, or guaranteeing the benefits of justice operators. This is just a small presentation to show evidence of what we are saying. And this is not a detailed explanation of all the cases. We believe that this is not the right place for that. Cecilia Goyeneche is the um, assistant uh, prosecutor of um, the Corruption Prosecutor Office, Cecilia Goyenete. She was um, appointed Assistant Prosecutor for the province. And uh, during her work, she conducted several investigations against several officials of the province of Entre Rios. She participated in the case for which former governor of province of Entre Rios was charged. Sorry and the current ambassador before Israel and Cyprus. And she also participated uh, charging several family members of these people. And the former governor of Entre Rios was convicted to 12 years of prison. She also led the investigation of a case regarding agreements and contracts that is the most important corruption case in the province of Entre Rios. The case includes fake agreements between officials in the local legislative power. And this implied costs for over 150 million pesos for the public treasury. 31 people are prosecuted for this. 
And the reaction for this uh, was weak. Several fake news were disseminated regarding Cecilia Goyeneche. Several defendants also uh, reported or complained uh, against uh, Ms. Goyeneche. Um, they told that she should have been excused from participating in this proceeding. The jury of indictment of the province started a disciplinary proceeding against her and suspended her when she was conducting the oral trial against the go former governor. But the most important attack against due process of law will occur when the jury of indictment um, changed uh, the court. They created a new ad hoc jury or, uh, or court for that. Only there was a person that decided to take the ad hoc prosecutor position. Uh, all these measures are against due process of law and presumption of innocence. And these are a cover-up sanction against Ms. Goyenete for prosecuting the political power. This was a way to send a dangerous message to justice operators. Now they know what they can expect if they decide to investigate officials from the province of Entre Rios. We have Prosecutor Arias, who was in charge of investigating corruption acts, and 14 people were convicted because of his investigation. This includes the Minister of Ports of the province. Also, this prosecutor investigated uh, acts of corruption by Mayor of Las Charruas who was convicted because of his actions in another municipality. And the second proceeding, the public officials requested that the prosecutor would be removed. And he was uh, reported for different crimes. And since their complaint was dismissed, they decided to conduct a private investigation against the prosecutor. They also uh, challenged uh, the whole case. This shows that the person that investigates acts of corruption is persecuted and harassed. We have the case of Dr. Rubio. He is the chief prosecutor of the fourth judicial district of Neuquén. This magistrate is investigating the lack of compliance with judicial orders committed by officials of Langostura. Although, Dr. Rubio's acts were legitimate. Legislators from the official political party presented a report against him. And they say that the prosecutor investigation was an attempt to intervene in the municipal government. The officials said that the prosecutor requested an order, but this was a lie. And the court of um, said that this was not true, dismissed their um, report and that the Attorney General Office already requested that information. And because of the disagreement, uh, the search warrant presented by the prosecutor was okay, but the report was aimed at persecuting the prosecutor or Dr. Rubio so that he did not investigate into the acts. This was a way to dissuade other prosecutors for investigating. So, and also the prosecutor Rubio was reported, but not the judges. This was also supported by a media campaign against Mr. Rubio. Thank you commissioners and rapporteur for this opportunity and for your time. I would like to explain how serious the situation is in my province, in Santa Fe. Since 2014, we have a criminal legal system that is transparent. And within this framework in 2009, the Ministry of Public Prosecution was created with an organic law that was very important for Latin America. The system allowed for the creation of prosecutor offices 
that have specialized roles. For example, the Complex and Economic uh, Crime Unit was created aimed at finishing with the irregularities of the criminal system to investigate corruption acts and the crimes committed by powerful people. It's important to say that economic rights have to do with several murders that are happening in my province. The unit started to work very well. There were two very important cases. One is the mega case. That is a group of uh, real estate crimes and money laundering that included several politicians that have connections with power. We cannot hear you. Ms. Gisela, I think that your mic is off. I think that the Zoom mic is off. Now we can hear you. Um, could you hear my presentation? Yes, we could hear you. So I will continue. Please go ahead. I will continue. I think that there is someone else that has their mic open. That's why we have the echo. Can you hear me now? No, we cannot hear you now. We cannot hear you now. I don't know if the team can help us because you're on mute on Zoom. Now you can hear, we can hear you. I would like to give the floor to Keisha. Can you help us? Gisela. I think that Mr. Marcelo was with his Zoom mic open. If Marcelo has his mic open, Gisela should have his mic closed. Mr. Marcelo, can you, Marcelo, can you? My mic is muted. Now it's perfect. We can continue. Thank you. Thank you. So I was talking about the creation of the unit of complex and economic crisis that worked very well, that there were two important cases, the mega case that was a case regarding real estate crimes and money laundering that were related to business people and the political power. And then the senator case that was about the bad management of subsidies during electoral campaigns and the use of public funds and illicit uh, activities by senators of the province. We revealed important criminal networks. Since 2017, the regional prosecutor of the second district, Patricio Serjal, was appointed. He had the support of several politicians and he was appointed in that position to stop the uh, progress in these investigations. And he dismantled the unit of complex crimes. He removed the prosecutors. They sent or they he issued several decisions to favor those who were prosecuted. Prosecutor Narvaja and McCormas, who were in charge of the investigation, suffered all types of harassment. There was a report presented by the legislature, and he and we saw that there were several instances who indicated that the prosecutors work uh, legally. But there were so many reports against the prosecutors and the legislature cannot continue operating. And the organic law established a system of discipline in order to guarantee impartiality guarantees for the prosecutors in order to protect them. But what the legislature did, they changed the law. Towards the end of 2017, all of a sudden, without any discussion, without any reflection on what were there by majority, this discipline system enshrined in the organic law was eliminated. And therefore, and the system complied with the UN standards. It was a mixed system. There was an audit court and there was a mixed court. And the legislature eliminated all these standards and eliminated this discipline system. And they uh, had the power to remove prosecutors. 
for example, for bad performance. What they did is they remove the judge, they uh, give permissions uh, to those who were persecuted. Uh, prosecuted. Nowadays, removing a prosecutor in Santa Fe is very, very easy. And no other country has a system like this. And the prosecutors in my province are now know who they can investigate and who they cannot. And there was, for example, an investigation regarding illegal games. And it was in charge of this prosecutor. And there is solid evidence that shows that the different officials had an organization, a criminal organization, to promote illegal games in the, in the province. But the prosecutor who allowed this was prosecuted. But the senator who was in charge of this or behind this is free. Uh, but because he had uh, protections because he was a senator. And therefore, we see that also the Supreme Court of the province supported the protection for the senator. The attorney general office is, is continuing its investigation. Several officials have been prosecuted, but the prosecutors are suffering so many reports against them. There are two reports and two cases that are being managed by these legislators. For example, a judge who participated in one of the hearings accusing the senator was reported and was removed. The legislature can intervene in any report against a prosecutor, even though it's a report that has no basis. They use these reports to impose discipline and to tell us what we can do or what we cannot do. In our province, there are so many murders. Hundreds of people are being murdered. But when we try to investigate these crimes, we see that there are several irregularities and it's impossible to investigate. There are too much impunity in my province. Marcelo, you have the floor. Hello. As we see in the previous cases, we see that the duty to impart law is not being complied. It's not being followed. I'm sorry, one second. I want to share my presentation. We see that the duty to impart law and to amend laws to guarantee the independence and the partiality of the judiciary, that is a guarantee. And that's a serious situation. But also we see that there are interventions or direct in, um, interventions in the judiciary. Sometimes uh, investigations are improved, proceedings are stopped, and the public opinion is manipulated in order to disqualify the prosecutor in, prosecutors in charge of those investigations. At a national level and a provisional, provincial level, we see that when there are cases against the political power, or the, what we see is that the political power goes beyond the criminal system. They attack the prosecutors. Sometimes, if it's necessary to change the procedures to go against a prosecutor, they can do it. If they need to manipulate the opinion, public opinion, they can do it. It's not only attacks against prosecutors, but for many years at the federal, national, and provincial level, we see that the political power has done everything to do. They have under their power to manipulate justice. Uh, political officials uh, are denounced uh, the justice. The justice is some is has been attacked and now citizens believe that justice is powerless or is not effective. What we see is a reality. And this is reflected upon the speech of the president of the Supreme Court of Justice of Argentina, Mr. Rosati, who said that we are convinced that we should raise our voice, especially to reivindicate the separation of powers and the republic values. We are not the ones who have understood how serious the situation is. We see that there are several attacks against justice at a public level. For example, we see that sectors that are close to the incumbent government that try to uh, attack 
the members of the Supreme Court. They have been accused of going against democracy, for example. And we see that these speeches were supported by the Vice Minister of Justice of the federal government. And we also see the President of Argentina that during the opening speech in Congress, he questioned the Supreme Court and he said that the Supreme Court was complic uh, was in complicity with the business sector of the country. We said that there are also legislative bills, administrative provisions. Uh, for example, they have processes to democratize justice. For example, the bill to reform the law regarding the planning prosecutor system in Argentina, which has been highly criticized. That bill tried to reduce the legislative majorities to appoint the Attorney General of the Republic so that the governing political party could appoint that position. And also they have more control over the public prosecutor prosecution office. This goes against all the the protections and the guarantees for prosecutors. There are several reforms of the Council of Magistrates. We see that the political power is trying to gain uh, power there. We see that judges and prosecutors are being appointed um, in a regular way. And we see that um, the judiciary is all the time negotiating its budget. What we are seeing right now several setbacks in provinces, in the provinces, but also at a national level. And we see a common pattern. The political power is trying to harass and to persecute prosecutors. And this goes against the guarantees of independence and autonomy of the judiciary. Therefore, we request the commission to monitor and to follow up this issue at the general level and with regard to the specific cases that we mentioned, and that demands the state to abstain from acting and to undermine the independence of the public prosecution office. We need to highlight the several pronouncements of the Inter-American Court and of the Inter-American Commission that account for the need to monitor and to guarantee the independence of justice operators in order to guarantee impartial investigations according to international standards of human rights, especially when it comes to acts of corruption, because we know that it has a serious impact on the effectiveness of civil and political rights and on economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights. Thank you for your time and for giving a special attention to this issue. Thank you. Now we will give the floor to the state for 20 minutes. Thank you very much, Madam President. Good morning. Commissioners, I would also like to greet the representatives of the petitioner. Thank you on behalf of the Argentine state for the invitation to take part in this hearing and also the petitioners for their presentation. Madam President, the delegation of the state is led by the Undersecretary for the Protection of Human Rights and International Liaison, Ms. Andrea Pochak and it's made up of officials of her secretariat, the National Director for International Legal Affairs, Gabriela Kletzel, the advisor to this direction, Mr. Lucas Martinez, and myself, Javier Salgado. Um, I work at the um, Ministry for Foreign Affairs. Madam President, now I will give the floor to Ms. Pochaski. Buenos dias. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, petitioners. And I would also like to specially greet the board, the new board of the commission and the new president. Congratulations, Julissa, for this appointment. The reason we are here focuses on the matter of judicial independence and most specifically in the autonomy of prosecutors to investigate corruption reports without the interference of other branches of power. The document of the request for this hearing um, mentions some specific situations in which uh, prosecutors of different jurisdictions in Argentina went through different mechanisms for accountability. 
So this hearing represents an opportunity to um, restress Argentina's commitment to the autonomy of the public prosecutor's office and the independency of its justice system and its duty to investigate all acts of corruption. Now, without going into the specific detail of the cases included in these requests on which we will uh, send information in written form after this hearing as a show of our commitment to the inter-American system, we must start by saying that in any of the cases presented here, the, the magistrates, were the magistrates removed and that generally officials, political officials who were accused of corruption continued to be prosecuted in the criminal processes that were opened. Some of them were even convicted. As the commission will understand, we are talking about isolated events and their characteristics. So we're talking about things that sometimes took place five years ago and the jurisdictions and bodies are very diverse. So they do not represent an alleged general situation calling for this hearing. The federal structure of the Argentine state has each province designing and administering its local judiciary in an autonomous manner. So in the country, there are 24 local justice systems and a federal one. All of them are autonomous from the political provincial power and the national government. So while the requests for since the requests for this hearing refers to events that took place in different jurisdictions with the intervention of bodies from local structures it seems inadequate to um, provide a general analysis of these allegations also the legal and institutional nature of these cases does not present a shared identity that allows to identify a general pattern addressed at undermining the independence of the public prosecutors. We found requests for investigation at legislative, provincial legislative offices or um, removal proceedings, local removal proceedings, criminal reports, so it is clear that the circumstances being reported cover a wide array of um, offices that do not make up a single um, office. They, these are unconnected events where prosecutors had to uh, take account, be accountable for their actions. And there's no link between the links against the provincial justice and the situation of the the current situation of the public prosecutor's office. What was presented here was a generic critique to a project of reform of the organic law of the public prosecutions uh, prosecution, which is currently being debated at the Congress. And this legislative process is not even finished. It's part of the uh, duty of the state to draw its own rules, but there has been no specific result yet. And this has nothing to do with the other allegations in this hearing. In the request, they also include considerations about a citizen's protest in front of the uh, building of the, con of the Supreme Court. According to these, um, to the petitioners, uh, this was a people's protest that has nothing to do with the public prosecution. And there are no specific circumstances calling for the concern of this commission in terms of judicial, judicial independence. On the contrary, what is described as a people's revolution actually is about, it uh, refers to a peaceful demonstration of the disagreement of a sector of society with the decisions of the higher court. And of course, 
this is an example of the uh, enjoyment of human rights to protest, which the state must protect. So this uh, citizens' concentration of February 2022 cannot be considered an attack on the independence of the judiciary. That is why the Argentine state considers that a hearing, a general hearing in the terms of Article 66 of the uh, rules of the Inter-American Court is not the right uh, place where to discuss these circumstances. Having said this, the national government still understand how important the work of prosecutors is in our country. The process of justice for crimes against humanities has always been supported by many federal prosecutors in the entire country. And we are, an, we are aware of the commitment of many prosecutors, local and national prosecutors in the fight against organized crimes. We, and at many points, they even risk their own lives when doing that. So the, uh, of course, the administration will always support any serious reports of actions that attack the autonomy of prosecutors. The Argentine state is fully aware that those investigating corruption need to be protected by strict warranties because this is specifically important for society. Once that has been clarified, we must say that there are no signs that in Argentina, there's a situation of uh, pervasive prosecution against prosecutors. It is clear that corruption is a scourge that affects the rule of law, that undermines institutional credibility and is an obstacle for human rights. To face that, it is fundamental to implement public policies that aim at eradicating it at all levels of the state, which is a, com a commitment that Argentina has had, has always had. In the report, the written report we will send after this hearing, we will describe some of the actions of the state in the fight against corruption. Also, considering that this hearing is about the, situ the current situation of some provincial prosecutors, but also about the situation of the national uh, state prosecution, we should also discuss the autonomy of the office of the public prosecutor. Its institutional design gives it a degree of independence that is unparalleled in the world because of the reasons I will mention right now. This office made, is made up of the uh, prosecutors in Argentina since 1994. It's uh, an autonomous body, unlike other structures where prosecutors respond to the judiciary. Article 120 of our constitution says that this office is independent and autonomous, and it, it's also economically autarkic, and it's the constitution says that its members, um, that its members' uh, position will be protected. And the uh, rules of our country say that this body is autonomous, so it will not be subjected to any other bodies. And that modality of organization is strictly adjusted to the standards of this Inter-American Convention about justice operators. The Office of the Public Prosecutor is made up of is led by the public prosecutor who is key for justice administration. That is why the law uh, has a very rigorous procedure to appoint them and remove them. And the current situation has shown that the uh, high majority needed to appoint that position make it very difficult to um, appoint someone. That is why after the former prosecutor resigned in 2017, the leader of the organization is an interim public prosecutor. There has no one been, there has never been anyone at that position for this much time. And in opposition to what was said by the um, petitionaries, this um, does not represent a risk to the autonomy. I mean, the, the, 
the debate in the country is not something that affects the autonomy of the office. And finally, the state believes that it is of the essence to mention that a strict mechanism to control the behavior of um, prosecutors is essential for the rule of law. This is a demand of international law so submitting these officials to accountability mechanisms could never be referred to as a threat to the judiciary independence. And that is why uh, these operators are part of the state's work to protect human rights. So they need to observe the highest standards, in particular in terms of non-discrimination and the fight against institutional violence. Prosecutors must actively work against violations for, uh, of human rights. They must open investigations when there are violations of the um, laws that were designed to protect the right to life and personal integrity. So their work is of the essence for the right of access to justice. So state, uh, sorry, so prosecutors must act with due diligence and good faith in protecting the rights of the victims and the accused. Otherwise, they would be affecting the responsibilities of the state. So it is evident that the actions of prosecutors that go against the general well-being might be very hurtful, as is seen when they uh, work in an undue manner. That is why there should be a strong control system that allows to sanction any illicit made by these public officials. A justice administration that guarantees the rule of law must protect the organic independence of its officials and the transparency of its accountability processes. The Rapporteur for Magistrates of the UN has said that the state's institutions must be as independent as responsible in protecting the rule of law. And it has, she, has, she has also said that the requirement of unbiasedness is not for the benefit of magistrates and prosecutors, but for the users of the judicial system. And that is why if the warranties of independence and unbiasedness are privileges granted to prosecutors and judges in the benefit of citizens, there should be mechanisms to check that those privileges are being used in the correct manner because of everything I have said here and without specific considerations about the cases presented at this commission, we do not believe that um, the mechanisms of control of the public prosecution should not be uh, mentioned as a violation against human rights. Controlling public prosecution's office is part of the system of checks and balances that is um, a warranty of the inter international law system. So the Argentine states believe it's very important to protect the independency of the public prosecution. But this cannot be linked to the intervention of institutional mechanisms for control on the work of prosecutors. Unlike those who were um, who were part of the executive between 2015 and 2019, this current administration has a strong commitment to improve the institutional qualities of Argentina. And that entails protecting the independency of the um, judiciary and the public prosecution, implementing the reforms that are necessary for that. We hope that the commission will accompany that fundamental process to strengthen the rule of law and the democracy of our country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Pochak. And now we might lead to the participation of the Inter-American Commission. First, I will ask Esmeralda Rosemena if she has any questions or comments. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, everyone. Um, to the representatives of the, um, not the civil society, but the magistrates 
and prosecutors in this organization. We're talking right now with prosecutors. And also, I would like to thank the state of Argentina and both parties for their contributions, for the information they had presented. And of course, we would like to have all the written documentation you can send us to back what you have said today. I get the feeling today that there are two positions that are quite opposite. For on the one hand, we have the uh, public prosecutors and the prosecutors associations, and then we have the position of the state. I would just like to know, because we were told here that there was a um, change in the normative. And as part of that change, there's the modification of the disciplinary system. When we talk about the accusatory criminal system, which was explained in a very clear manner, we know how important the accusatory system is for the criminal sphere to ensure justice, to ensure all the rights of all the parties. So this change that, according to the position of the state, has not taken place, which is still in process. I don't know if him, I mixed up uh, the explanations, but it seems that it, this hasn't happened yet. But the, the organizations tell us that this change has allowed to uh, subject the judiciary to the political powers. And of course, that means there's an undermining of the principles of uh, autonomy and independence required to ensure and if the effective work of the judiciary and an investigation stage that is of high level. So I would like to be aware of that because the representatives of the state have also pointed out that the constitution um, there's a provision in the constitution for the non-intervention of the branches of power. So if there is um, a constitutional warranty, what's the reality of what was presented here? So I would like to um, have that clarified. Apart from that, Another thing that I find very important, and I would like some explanation about this, with regards to the organizations have told us that there was a change in the position of a prosecutor's office that seems to have the power to transform the features of specialized prosecutions. I would like to clarify that because the representatives of the prosecu public prosecutor's office have stated that this, this content of what's entailed by um, institutions um, as they as were mentioned here and what that change might entail. And finally, I would like to know if the federal government in that vision of what a nation and a state is should protect the uh, separation of powers or the division of powers 
and the justice system in the entire nation. That will be all for now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner Hernandez, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I also would like to thank the petitioners of the hearings for their request and the representatives of the state for their replies. I would like to understand things in perspective. I think that the commission has documented the specific cases that the petitioners mentioned regarding some situations that are occurring in some of the provinces. We understand also as these under Secretary of Human Rights have pointed out, is this is not a situation that represents the whole country, the whole uh, the whole state of Argentina. But I thank her for their offering to present detailed information explaining each of the cases and the situations that have been presented before us. I think that this would be very helpful for the commission to understand the current situation of these prosecutors whose job is under threat. I also believe that Argentina has shown its commitment as a state to judicial independence, especially with regard to the guarantees that prosecutors should have. And those are the same guarantees that judges should have regarding their appointment, the respect of the due process of law, especially when it comes, and also when it comes to the removal. But I don't have clarity regarding um, what's, what are the measures or the mechanisms at an federal level to guarantee the work of prosecutors at a regional level. I understand that there is a division of competencies in a federal state, but I would like to know what's the role of the federal structure regarding regional prosecutors. And I would like to know if the organic law of the public prosecution office that has been mentioned here includes protection for prosecutors at the regional level. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Roberta Clark, you have the floor now. Thank you, President Mantia, and uh, good afternoon to the representatives of the state and the representatives of civil society organizations. Um, and my, my, I just have two questions, uh, but I do, I do understand that the state is saying that the, the, that the cases that have been uh, presented here today do not uh, represent the whole country, as Commissioner Hernandez has already um, repeated. But I'm also understanding that the state is saying that there is no pattern in the cases. In a sense, these cases are perhaps coincidental. But it does seem to me that there is a pattern that has emerged from the cases that are presented here, which is that the prosecutors who have whose um, tenure has been interrupted are, have all been involved in the investigation of corruption. So uh, I would like to hear a little bit more about that from the state. Also um, to say that uh, I understand from the state's presentation that the constitution entrenches or embeds the independence of uh, prosecutors uh, at the federal level. And I wanted to find a little bit more about how independence of prosecutors at the provincial level is assured. And then lastly, what measures are in place that can insulate or should insulate justice actors from political interference and acts of reprisal? That's, that's my third question. And I want to end by uh, commending the uh, Association of Prosecutors and Society Organizations for the, the initiation of this hearing. The civil society has to play a very active role in monitoring and indeed defending the independence of justice actors and the rule of law, and that's uh, what's happening here. So I would like to thank them for their vigilance and also to thank the state for its responses. Thank you, Commissioner. 
I would like to make some general comments. The Inter-American Commission is highly concerned regarding the situation of the judicial independence and the administration of justice of prosecution offices across the region. And that's the framework of this specific hearing in spite of the specific facts. Secondly, um, apart from this, I also wanted to recall all of you, the principle of continuity of the state. Administrations can change, but there should be some continuity in the state. And that's some issue that we have discussed before. And that's something that I wanted to um, make clear. I have a question for the Association of Prosecutors and has to do with the impact of those specific measures of these specific cases on the administration of justice, on the credibility and trust of the judicial system, if you could talk about this. And for the state, I understand what you are telling us that these are specific cases that we cannot identify a pattern, but uh, I would like to know what measures can be taken um, in relation to these specific cases that have been presented here. And this is also related to the fight against corruption. That is a huge concern of the Inter-American Commission. And we have a thematic report on corruption and human rights and Inter-American standards. And the state has the duty to investigate corruption cases and also to minimize, prevent, or eliminate any reprisal against prosecutors in these investigations or because of these investigations. So for the Association of Prosecutors, I would like to know what impact you identified on the credibility of the administrator of justice in general and for the state, how you can guarantee that there are no retaliation against prosecutors who investigate acts of corruption and how this will be included in the procedures to reform justice. I now would like to give the floor to the Association of Prosecutors for 12 minutes. Can you hear me? Hola, hola. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we clearly, we hear you loud and clear. I would reply the questions in order. The last question is the easiest regarding the impact on the credibility of justice or the justice systems and why we are pointing to this persecution against prosecutors who investigate corruption. To give you some details, the province of Entre Rios has over 1 million inhabitants and the different authorities in the different municipalities. Uh, we know that there is only a few number of officials in those municipalities and the officials are well known everywhere. Imagine that Dr. Jose Arias, that is the prosecutor of one of the cases that we presented, he prosecuted a mayor and then another mayor, and he ended up being reported or charged for the same flag, fact in different instances and four times. In the case of Ms. Goshenetche, her persecution included defamation and also gender violence. Ms. Goshenetche did not want to talk. She's telling me that she is here and she wants to speak. She went through hard situations. And because of the media campaigns, this is happening everywhere, all every day. We can see this in media all the time. Uh, the state said that nothing happens, that there are only control or overseeing mechanisms. But Ms. Gojeneche is suspended, is at home, and she's only uh, receiving 30% of her salary. And this is all the values that exist to investigate corruption. All the prosecutors in the province of Entre Rios know each other. And they did nothing while the prosecutor that was investigated this case, she couldn't do anything. She had no protection. And we can show you documentation to show you that this is an illegal thing. Goyeneche will go to the Supreme Court if it's necessary. We can show you all the documents, but we were mentioning some cases 
just show you some basis that this is actually happening. Uh, if I or my colleague Gisela says the independence of justice is being violated in Argentina, any of the members of the states or the commissioners would tell us, but that's a feeling. Why are you telling us this? So we saw that we should present some cases to show you some evidence. But the duty of the state is to pass laws. That's a fundamental duty of the state. And these laws should be to protect the guarantees, but also they should reform or amend those laws that are not effective enough. But if that's not enough, the state or the officials of the state are the ones that are interfering. This is not just a feeling. It's a day-to-day -day reality. It seems as the reply of the state is to fragment. They believe that these cases are not representative, but for them, that's why we are speaking before this commission, because they are representative. This is a pattern. This is a question or an issue that is all media every day. The judiciary is considered one of the most corrupt uh, sectors of the state. But this is because justice is being violated all the time. Prosecutors are attacked and magistrates and prosecutors don't speak. And what the sub president of the, just, of the Supreme Court says was very important. It's time to tell society uh, to tell what happening, what's happening with the justice in our country. Uh, I would like to give the floor to, to my colleagues, Ms. Goyeneche, and there was a question that was specific for Gisela Paolochi. So Gisela, you, uh, first uh, Cecilia and then Gisela. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, commissioners, for hearing us. My name is Cecilia Goyeneche. I'm the assistant prosecutor of the province of Entre Rías. So I'm the second in the hierarchy in the public prosecutor office of Entre Rios. I'm also the anti-corruption prosecutor of the province. I'm also a member of the network of anti-corruption prosecutors that is uh, of the Council of Prosecutors of Argentina. And as Commissioner Clark said, there is a common pattern in these cases. These are just a, represent a sample of all the cases. We have not mentioned other cases here. And the pa common pattern is the investigation of macro corruption cases or corruption related to uh, organized crime in the country. And the common pattern is the reaction on the side of the state or in the provinces regarding those investigations of corruption. And there are two reactions. One, uh, campaigns to would create um, defamation that create some reaction, especially in small populations. And then there is a second aspect that has to do the crisis of economic, social, cultural, environmental rights, especially the labor rights of prosecutors. They create a situation of insecurity for prosecutors and for other prosecutors so that they have the feeling that those who investigate corruption cases are subjected to a legal proceeding, to a prosecution. And that prosecution also uh, prevents them from working and from conducting their role as prosecutors. No prosecutor has issues with accountability, but accountability should be done following legal standards. And what happened, for example, in my case, I think that my case shows this very clearly is that we I ha, I suffered that defamation campaign uh, I include was uh, um, they talked about the friendship of my husband they criticized me for that but also I was submit subjected to a prosecution that was full of irregularities of illegal things. I was prosecuted with partial judges that chose an ad hoc prosecutor to prosecute me because if they decided to follow the legal mechanisms, there are three laws in Entre Rías that establish that the 
prosecution of a prosecutor should be done by the attorney general. But since they did not trust, uh, because if the attorney general took the case, probably there was going to be no prosecution. So they decided to choose an ad hoc prosecutor among a list of lawyers that are co-magistrates. There were 15 magistrates in the province that decided not to accept this appointment. And they had legal basis for this. They said that this was illegal, but they found a person. And that's why in my situation, the trial will be conducted within two months. And I am being prosecuted by a person that has no the legal capacity to do so. And I was removed from my position. Do you know why? They said that I couldn't guarantee the balance necessary to perform such a high level position. And that's why I believe that that is also something that is sexist because uh, women could be unbalanced. I think that's the perception that I feel that, or what they believe that I was. And this happened within a very specific context. I was conducting the oral trial of five joint cases of corruption against the former governor of the province of Enterrios, that is the current ambassador to Israel. That is the current situation that we are living. And the pattern is very clear. Today, the prosecutors of the province of Enterrios need to think if they decide to prosecute a case of corruption. They need to take into consideration all the factors and to understand the cost of continuing with that investigation. That's a pattern that we want to stop. Thank you. Shisela? I want to be very brief. I would like to answer the question of the commissioner regarding the change in regulations. The change of regulations occurs at the, in the province of Santa Fe, not at the national level. It's in our province. And what we were explaining that the moment of the change of the reform is unnecessary because the Attorney General Office had an organic law that followed the UN guidelines with guarantee of impartiality for the judges. It was a mixed system with an audit part and with a court that was made up of a senator, a representative, a lawyer, and a regional prosecutor. And all of a sudden, the legislature uh, gave itself the exclusive power of sanctioning or removing prosecutors using a law that is vague. It talks about bad performance, but it does not establish a due process of law does not have minimum guarantees. Uh, prosecutors uh, do not need, to, we want to be held accountable. We want to have proceedings, but when prosecutors, when legislators were being investigated, we have this change, this reform in this legislation. And therefore all the prosecutors are working under pressure right now. Now I would like to give the floor to Dr. Narvaja. She will be asking, answering one of the questions. Buenos días a las Thank you very much. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you so much for your questions. Um, to answer your final questions, we wanted to say that the original organic law of uh, the public prosecution's office, I work also in the province of Santa Fe, which um, adjusted, as my colleague said, to these standards, these gu guidelines by the UN, um, had the possibility to create special unit to, units to investigate specific crimes like corruption. In the case of, uh, of Santa Fe, the province of Santa Fe, what we tried to explain in a clear manner was that the legislature and at some point the executive branch using um, diminished list of requirements for prosecutors appointed the person my colleague mentioned 
And basically, his mission was to disarticulate this operational unit. So in answer to your question, there were no mechanisms provided by the state to say, what's going on? Why aren't you complying with the principle of progressivity? Because there was already a consolidated office, a technical team that was able to prosecute these cases, and it was completely disarticulated without it raising any flags. Thank you so much, sir. I'm really sorry, but we've run over the time, the allotted time. Thank you so much. Please, you can send us more information in written form. Now I will give the floor to the state. You will have an additional uh, minute for your participation. Thank you very much, Madam President and commissioners for your questions. The um, as you know, the Argentine state fully respects the inter-American system and all its mechanisms and instruments. We are at a general hearing. That's why we should not refer to specific cases. We want to be responsible and try to work on individual cases when it's time to do that, when all domestic remedies have been exhausted. This is a general uh, hearing. So we are trying to explain the position of the state with regards to whether there's a general situation in the country that um, justifies the, the holding of this hearing. So in Argentina, as I said, there's no one public prosecutor's office. There are 25 because we are a federal state. So. It is not correct to say that there was a reform in the normative in Argentina because there was only a reform in the province of Santa Fe, which took place in 2018. The hearing is in 2022, but the reform was in 2018. And I think this is, uh, the, whether this regulation was constitutional or not is being discussed right now. If the hearing was particularly about the province of Santa Fe, we may have had more information. So there wasn't a general change in the normative of Argentina. There isn't a general situation affecting the whole country. Uh, this, we're talking about these, uh, sorry, five specific cases, which are probably serious and they have a right to um, defend themselves, but we're talking about five prosecutors in the entire country that cannot be representative of the situation of thousands of prosecutors in the entire country and 25 prosecutions in the entire country. Our national constitution has some fundamental warranties. I was talking about Article 120 of the constitution, which establishes the guidelines for the public prosecution of our nation, but the constitutional, this question on the federal warranties to preserve the autonomy of the uh, public prosecutions in the provinces, Article 5 says that each province, it says that each provincial constitution must warranty the independence, independence of the judiciary and the uh, public prosecutor's office. According to this article, provincial governments must ensure the Republican form of government. So what is the fundamental warranty? Justice. Each official that feels affected in, its auton in their autonomy can go to the local justice system and eventually to the Supreme Court. Hopefully that's not necessary, but they uh, can even come to the uh, Inter-American Commission. So there's not a pattern here. We're talking about a few cases um, that do not explain a general situation. In many cases, we're talking about all cases. In Argentina, we can't say that there's a pervasive pattern of prosecutors investigating corruption. We deny the, the the statement that there are um, there's a retaliation against prosecutors and nothing in the projects for reform that are being discussed at Congress and that would affect federal justice. There's nothing in those projects that would 
impact negatively the autonomy of prosecutors or their freedom to investigate corruption cases. And with regards to the president's question and comment about the principle of continuity of the state, of course, we're very much aware of that. That is why we find it so striking why this uh, hearing is being held right now and not in previous years when the Rapporteur for Judicial Independence in the UN called the state's attention because there was a pattern of um, a lack of autonomy in the prosecutors when clear cases of the involvement of the executive were found to remove judges and prosecutors to use the uh, intelligence services and to uh, run over judicial independence. So we're very much aware of the principle of continuity, but we needed to mention this because many of the cases being analyzed and discussed here are old cases. Some of them are being solved. Some of them have not exhausted remedies yet. The criminal cases uh, that these uh, prosecutors were investigating are still open. And many of the cases took place several years ago. I hope I was able to answer all your questions. And of course, after this hearing, we will be sending a written report with several annexes we received from uh, different jurisdictions in the country. Thank you very much. You know, thank you. It's almost the end of this hearing. I would just like to make a couple of general comments. Yes, this is a general hearing, not a case hearing. Now, the why this is being held right now, this um, is not up to the commission. The commission receives the request and deals with it. Now, uh, we uh, do not um, distinguish between administrations. Now, I would like to thank the um, presence of the Prosecutors Association. Of course, this is not a case hearing, but in all the regional hearings, all the general hearings we have, we allow people to speak. It's not a case hearing that has to do with the exhaustion of remedies. We allow people to speak, and that's the objective of our monitoring work. I would also like to thank the state of Argentina for acknowledging the system. As a rapporteur for Argentina, I have had several cases and general hearings, and I really appreciate, we all appreciate the fact that the Argentine state is here, that it sends the reports and that allows for this dialogue, which is very important for the Inter-American Commission and in particular for victims and for the region. And finally, two important elements. I would like to also acknowledge, as I said in the beginning, this is a general concern of the commission. And right now we are dealing with Argentina in particular, but I would like to make a, to recognize the work of justice operators in the judiciary, in the public prosecutions, doing the investigation because of the risks their work entails. That, that's the concern of the Inter-American Commission monitoring these situations and contributing with the inter-american system standards in the fight against corruption and the uh, protection of justice operators and secondly a differential perspective that acknowledges uh, particular perspectives like uh, the situation of women in justice for example and also we appreciate the presence of the state here of course and this information being offered, please rest assured that we receive all your information and it allows us to better monitor the entire situation. Finally, I would also like to thank each of you and everyone following this hearing. I know uh, it will continue to be seen. The Inter-American Commission would like to wrap up this hearing with a message of respect, of hope and of uh, continuous work for judicial independence, because that's what this is about, especially in a region that's suffering so much. Um, the respect for investigations and the fight against corruption is an essential warranty of democracy, and that's our idea here. I will close this hearing now. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.
Gracias a todos. Gracias. Thank you, everyone. Bye.